Hello, this is Michael Paul with New Orleans Scottish Rite College. I'd like to do a video today on a subject that is often an area of confusion, alchemy. When we speak of alchemy and Freemasonry together, it can often be a flashpoint for argument. Masons sometimes view alchemy, especially when connected to Freemasonry, as something akin to utter nonsense. Alchemists are often viewed as nutty old men in long robes, doing strange things all with the goal of swindling ignorant medieval royalty out of their wealth. Alchemists are often viewed as con men who played on the ignorant superstition and greed of their victims. But can we truly think of what the alchemists are said to have done as pure nonsense? My father was a career military man who retired as a full colonel from the army. I grew up on an army base and actually joined Freemasonry still living on that base. When my father retired, he wanted to do something that he enjoyed, made him feel creative, and relaxed him. He did something unexpected. He became a jeweler. He enjoyed creating pieces of jewelry. One day I was talking with my dad, who was a Freemason and a Rosicrucian, about the jewelry business. I asked him about when a new piece of jewelry was created and things went wrong. Who would pay for the ruined gold? He started laughing and asked, when any jeweler creates a new piece of golden jewelry, do you really think that they use a piece of real gold to work on and take the chance of destroying something that expensive? He pointed out that artificial gold is always used to practice on, as the cost is far, far less, and the look and feel is just like real gold. He also noted that just like artificial gold exists, so does artificial gems, which are grown and even sold as such, one of the most popular being cubic zirconia, which has the look and feel of real diamonds. It's not utter nonsense. It's what's in common practice all over the world and is a large part of the jewelry business. It is also a fact that a piece of artificial gold or an artificial gem were put in your hand, most people would have no idea that it's a fake. In many cases, it would take a trained jeweler with expensive modern equipment to determine the real from the fake. Is it possible to make real gold from base metal? I've never done it, but it is very possible to make something that looks, feels, and seems like real gold. It's done all the time. So if we were to go back in time to when the alchemists were the nutty old men in long robes, and they handed you awesome king, something that looked like, felt like, and by every known standard of the time, was gold, what would be the conclusion? So, is alchemy real? But, is that even the most important question? Maybe the real question is, what is the true goal of alchemy? Was the true goal of alchemy ever to simply change base metals into gold and con noblemen out of their wealth? Could there be something more? Alchemy brings about a change. It claims to take something less and make it of greater value. What does Freemasonry do? Do we claim to take good men and make them better? Is that a change and an improvement? Isn't that alchemy? The alchemical process is a complex series of events with a goal of improving the nature of something, making it of more value. A moral, upright, educated man is viewed as of more value to society than a rogue. Freemasonry was originally designed to be a complex series of events, initiations, and teachings with the goal of taking someone basically good and helping them to become a better human being. The degrees of Freemasonry can be viewed as the alchemical steps. By comparing the rituals, and I mean of any right, and looking at the various old alchemical texts, we can see very similar core steps or instructions. We can see that it is very reasonable that one borrowed from the other. The concepts and basic goals of both alchemy and Freemasonry are too similar to discount some association and basic connection in the formative time of our craft. In the Star Wars movie, The Empire Strikes Back, the young Jedi, Luke Skywalker, unsuccessfully attempted to lift his X-Wing fighter from a swamp. After several attempts, he gave up. He told the Jedi Master, Yoda, that lifting the fighter with the Force, as Yoda had asked him to do, 
was impossible. Yoda, just after lifting the X-Wing out of the swamp himself, told Luke, you must unlearn what you have learned. There is a profound wisdom in that statement. There are times when many of us hold on to ideas, concepts, or beliefs that deny us the opportunity of living a fuller, richer life. As a boy, a good friend of mine had an older brother who was the source of all good information for us. He was older and far more experienced than us. We would be foolish not to listen to him. One day I remember going to an ice cream shop with my friend, his older brother, and a few others. One of us started to order strawberry ice cream. The older boy jumped in, saying that strawberry was the worst flavor made. He said that he would never eat it, and anyone who did so would be doing so at their own risk. That was enough for me. I never touched the stuff until I was an adult. Even then, it was only because of an awkward situation. I was invited over to a friend's house for dinner. After dinner, his wife brought in the dessert, homemade strawberry ice cream. I was uneasy as I knew it would taste horrible, but I had to eat it or risk insulting them. To my amazement, it was wonderful. All throughout my childhood and for years into my adulthood, I denied myself something very good because I accepted something untested as a fact. I had to unlearn what I had learned about strawberry ice cream. What I also learned later on was that there was a reason why this older boy had such feelings about this flavor of ice cream. It turns out that he had a severe allergy to strawberries. It was not that he disliked the taste of it, but that strawberries did bad things to him. Luke was his own worst enemy because of his early teachings. I was my own worst enemy because of what I believed. We all need to test what we know as fact and explore the possibilities that new truths might be waiting for us when we open up to them. Freemasonry may be more than a club. Our rituals may be more than just moral plays. And alchemy may be something we wish to explore a little deeper. Thank you for watching. I hope this video has been of some value. If you like the channel, please hit the like button and subscribe to us. See you next time.